In this video, we're gonna build this bottom sheet for adding new tasks. So first we'll design it and then we'll implement the logic. So let's start out with our normal process for building out a widget tree. And that is identifying the atomic widgets, those widgets that don't have any children. So let's just start at the top here. So we've got this thing right here, which can be an icon button. So let's grab that and put that in. Then we've just got some text right here. Then we've got two text fields. And then finally a button. Our next step is to group close widgets into columns, rows, or stacks. And this will be pretty easy because none of these are in smaller groups. They're just in one group that we could dump into a column. So let's grab our column right here and pull it out. And then our third step is to ask if this needs a background. And yes, it does. We've got this gray and border. So let's just grab a container and put it in there and that's it we're ready to build so in order to build a bottom sheet we need a component so let's come in here and add a new component we'll call this add task and create component then we can just add all of our widgets we just designed so a container a column an icon button text two text fields and finally a button and let's just come over to our container that comes in with 100 by 100 and just get rid of that so we can see all of our widgets. Okay, great. Next, onto styling and spacing. We start out by setting the determinative things, so specific heights and widths, styles and text. So we can start up at the top and we can go to our container and we know it's got a border width of one and the border color is our black. And we've got some border radius of 24 pixels on the top left and right and let's just give it a width of infinity next we can come down to our icon button right here and there's no fill color so we can just come over here and clear it out there's also no border so we're going to delete that and clear out the border color and going to increase the size to 50 and the icon size to 30 and then we want to change this to a close icon so let's search for close and that's beautiful next we've got our text right here here, and let's change that to add task and this should be headline large next we've got our text input right here and we can add our theme style there we go we can remove this padding because we'll handle that later and let's just add our hint text and this should just be title next to our details right here and same thing we've got our theme style we can remove that padding and let's add our hint text as details and we want more space because this is more details about it so we can add the min lines of three and then finally our button we've got a theme style and we get that the text should be add task and let's get a nice plus icon here plus Beautiful. And let's just give it a size and a width on here to take up all the space. Okay, beautiful. First step done. Second step is setting alignment on columns, rows, and stacks. So let's start off with our top column right here, which is our only one. And for here, we actually want to change something with a main axis size. It's set to maximum right now. So it's main axis, this vertical axis. This is saying take up as much space as you're given. So you can see if I pull this open, it's just going to keep filling that space. But I don't actually want that because when this is implemented on the page, it will be given the whole height of the page, but I just want it to be as big as the content inside. So in that case, we can just set this to minimum. Now, I know this is wrapping right here. We'll get to our last step, which is padding in a minute. Then we have our main axis alignment. So it's starting all of our stuff from the top. That's good. And then our cross axis alignment. And I'm going to use this to push my content over here. But of course, we have a problem here with our close button right here, and we can do our trick that we've seen before when you have two different widgets that are in a column that need to be aligned in different ways and I'm just going to wrap this in a row so command B to wrap and row then I just go to my row and set it to end and that's everything we need for alignment next step is spacing so setting the spacing on our columns and rows and so we can come over to our column right here and clearly we want some spacing between each of these elements in here so we're going to give this 24 let's open this up so we can see a little bit more and then our fourth step is to set padding so here we can just come over to our column right here and set padding on all four sides let's give it 24 pixels 
Let's open this up a little bit more. And that looks great. Our design is done, so now we can hook up the logic. Okay, so where do we start with this logic? Well, let's think through how a user will use this. They'll be on the tasks page right here. They'll click on this button, and let's just get to our top level element. And then that add tasks bottom sheet will pop up from the bottom. Okay, so let's start here. So we wanna trigger this when the user clicks on this button. So we can come over to this button to our action flow editor and add an action. So when the user taps, we wanna show a bottom sheet. And there it is, show. We've already designed our component, so let's just select it. It's our add task component. Now here you have an option to set a height. We're already handling that, so we don't need to do that. We can set the background color. We're already handling that with our component and the barrier color. The the barrier color is the color of the overlay between the bottom sheet and this screen right here. It defaults to a dark gray and we'll keep that. Next, we have an option to say whether it's dismissible or not. This option specifies whether they can dismiss it, so whether they can click out of it and it'll close, or if you have enabled drag, they can drag it down to close it. And here we want it to be dismissible and enable them to drag it because we want to design for forgiveness. So if they click it on accident, they can just close it. And whether to use safe area, we're just going to leave this off. Okay, this logic is set up for opening our bottom sheet. Now we have to configure the logic on the bottom sheet itself. So let's go back over to our add task component. And what logic do we need to add here? Well, we need to add the logic for actually adding the task to our Firestore database. And we need to add the logic for closing this bottom sheet by clicking on this button. So let's start up here. So we want to add some logic. When the user clicks on it, we want to do something with the bottom sheet and we want to dismiss it. It. Beautiful. Now our button right here. But before we do that, let's give good names to our inputs because we're going to reference those in our logic. So here we're just going to call this title and here we can just call this details. Beautiful. Now we can come to our button right here into our action flow editor. Let's add an action. And what are we doing? Well, we're creating a new tasks that will live inside our tasks collection right here. Okay. So we want to create a document in our file store. Then we specify which collection it is. It's our task collection. And then we can set our fields. So first one is the title and we want that coming from here so it's going to be from a variable let's click this open and you've got this shortcut where we can just click on it let's set a default value and confirm next set our details same thing from a variable instead of doing our shortcut remember it's just sitting in this widget state this is the same thing beautiful next we've got our completed property whether this task is completed or not and we're just creating it so of course it's false that's great we we can just close these up. Next, we want to set which user this is. So remember, tasks are attached to users. So we want to reference the authenticated user and we need a user reference beautiful and one more property to go that's the time that this is created and so we can come in here and get that from our global properties the current time confirm beautiful let's test this out okay let's add a task get ice and get ice at store add task and beautiful it adds it up there but we have a problem that this isn't dismissed okay so we just need to add another action let's do that so because we're going to add another action here we need to open the this up so we can see and then just add that same dismiss action bottom sheet dismiss beautiful now let's try that out so let's add another task get more ice from a different store and add task beautiful and we can test out our dismiss action and that works and that's how to build our bottom sheet in our to-do app